Noble Igwe. Noble Igwe is, uh, aka Nobs, as his friends choose to call him, is from Umomako in Orumba South Local Government of Anambra State, but was born and brought up in Aba in Abia State. He's a typical Igbo boy, and he's proudly so. This is one guy who makes being an Igbo boy very you know attractive uh and he's one person who whenever i talk with i i, I could always feel comfortable to speak in Igbo because my mother is Igbo, anyways and so with oh, noble 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 puts it that way that Igbo is the best language in the world and he's proudly ninja with that and his career has started as um a fine arts teacher in Gombe State High School um, and after that he had a stint with Virgin Nigeria where he moved on to the marketing department after years in Virgin Nigeria uh, he 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 also had a stint with a powerhouse 141 worldwide and there he stopped the nine-to-five job and uh, um, began the things that interest him. Um, the many faces of Noble Igwe, as you can see in the slides. Um, he's a businessman. He's the founder and chief marketing officer of the 360 Group. Um, the most popular group uh, is the 360knobs.com. Noble is one of those who have translated his hobbies into business, and that's why he's here today to share how you can turn your side hustle and make it into your main hustle. Uh, Noble is one of those who has translated his his hobbies into a business he has always been a lover of events and even while in paid employment continued to juggle his job alongside events promotion PR and production in May of 2015 noble launched style Vitae, an all-round luxury, affordable fashion and style website that has since taken the Nigerian digital space by storm. Now, he's also um, the uh, 360knobs.com is an all-round entertainment and lifestyle website that provides entertainment lovers with the latest news, music, fashion, information, etc., etc. Um, he's, uh, he, has a, he has a podcast, My Noble Opinion. He's had past projects with British American Tobacco, with HP, um, with Red Bull, with Airtel. He's had stints with um, the South Africa. Um, um, he's had um, opportunities with New Axe Jordans, and just the list goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome someone who I really, really admire um, to come share with us how to turn our side hustle into our main hustle and enjoy doing that. Thank you very much. Um. <laughs> I paid him to say all those good things about me. Uh, so, my name is Noble Igwe, and to show you guys how important you guys are to me, I have to take a bike uh, from Aja, because the traffic is much, and uh, because I needed, to, <laughs> I needed to be here. Um, so, like he said, I'm an Igbo boy. I, was, I am from Anambra State, but I grew up in Aba, and I'm one of those people who think that being Igbo is cool. I... I am proud of my Igbo accent, as well as some other things that make me Igbo. It's, it's a pity I'm not dressed like Igbo today, because I have other places to be. But anyways, uh, my name is Nobu, and um, I am one of those people who people think have been able to make money from what I love doing. So I, I, I served in Gombe State, and I moved to Lagos in, in March of 2005. So I, I, I was in Gombe State, and I saw the ad in the Guardian newspaper to apply for a job as, as a then Virgin Nigeria. I applied for the job of a call center. But while I was working in the call center, I was the guy that was always doing events for people in the company. So if you have a birthday, I will do it. If you have a party, I will help you plan it. So when Virgin Nigeria was one year, and they were looking for someone who would plan the Virgin Nigeria one year anniversary. So a lot of people said, Noble should do it. And then I did it. Then I did a good job. I, I, I think I did a good job. So it, was, it happened on a Saturday. Then I came to work on a Monday to the call center, which was where I was employed to work at. Then my colleagues told me that I didn't have a desk anymore, that the director of marketing, Dr. Yemi Shindero, had asked that they move everything that belonged to me to the marketing department, that I did such a good job, they were wasting me in the call center. So I moved to the call center, I moved to the marketing, and I set up the first ever Virgin Nigeria event and sponsorship department. So I was planning events for Virgin Nigeria. I was traveling to different places that we, we flew to, and I was doing all those things. But I also wasn't, I wasn't sort of satisfied. So I was helping, I was doing gigs on the side. If you know, like I had a nine to five, but I was also helping music artists to plan when to put out their song, how to go about their music, how to go about their dressing. So I worked with more hits, which was like the band, Don Jazzy, 
when they call Dr. Seed and the Prince back in 2008 as a then. So I was doing my job, I was doing this on the side, I was getting money on the side. But in 2008, I got bored of doing the same thing. I was making money and I needed to do something different. So I left Virgin Nigeria and I moved to advertising. I worked at 141 Worldwide and I was managing the British American Tobacco brand. And um, so in, in 2008, I got an email from Bella Niger, so they wrote me to write for them because I, I used to write on Facebook. Now, I, I grew up in Aba. I went to the University of Nigeria in soccer, but I was in Lagos. So in, in Lagos, my people I used to interact with, some of them went to Harvard, some of them went to universities abroad. And at some point in my life, I didn't think I was good enough. I knew I could write, but I didn't think I was that good for Virginia, uh, for Bella Niger just asked me to write for them. So I started writing for Bella Niger, but they wouldn't post my opinion as my opinion. Like, you know, they, they wanted to find a balance. I wanted to see if your music is, this is a church, but can I see if your music is whack? I want to say your music is whack. But they wouldn't let me do that. So I got tired and asked the owner, Uche Pedro, if it's okay for me to set up my own thing. And I, I set up TristaSynops.com. And I did it between 2009 and in 2010, I, I figured that I was making more money from the things I was doing outside than what I was being paid in my employment. So my, my, my salaries were being spent on clothing and I wasn't using, so like I was making more money to like feed the family, do every single thing that I was doing. And I was just wasting the other money I was getting from nine to five. So at that time I was being paid, I think about 6 million per annum. And, and I asked God to show me a sign that it was okay for me to leave paid employment to do my own thing. So, and on the 1st of April, 2010, I left paid employment and in two months I met six million. So I was like, that was a sign from God. So, cause I was thinking like if I could dedicate all the time that I was putting in, in paid employment to do my own thing. So at that time I was doing A&R for Mohit, for YJ, for Timmy Dakolo. I launched MI's music career in 2008. So I, like I had a lot of money coming from the, what I was doing on the side. And three systems was also giving money from the adverts and every single thing. So I started doing that as a full time, but I also got bored uh, in 2012 and I was dating someone. So the person I was dating, I, I thought I was going to get married. Well, we, we met her mom and her mom was of the opinion that I didn't have like a, a, a good jo job that she can touch. I mean, a lot of us used to, we used to be bloggers, <laughs> a lot of us we used to be bloggers. Most of our parents didn't rate us until Linda Ikeji bought a house. So, <laughs> so you know, so, and, and, and I had money and I was thinking of what to do to prove to her mom that I, I could afford to do the things. So I launched a business called the 360 Delivery, which was a logistic company. So I went to the market, I bought 20 bikes and I bought one Picanto Kia brand new and I paid in full cash because I had money and I was making money and I rented an office in VI and I told her to tell her mom that I now have <laughs> that I now have a business that she can touch and she can that she could feel. Um, but long story short, we didn't get married. We we didn't get married because I'm Anglican, she's Catholic. So you know, like I've, I've, I crossed one hurdle, another hurdle came up, and I, my my father is the ninth in the Anglican community. I couldn't go home to my father to say, you know what, I want to marry this girl. I'm going to switch to Catholic church. Anyways, we are friends now. But. I did 360 delivery, so people used to call us for logistics and all the rest of them. I was doing 360.com, and in 2014, I got bored again. Like, you know, so every, my business was moving the way I wanted my business to move. As an, and as an able man, right, I don't set up businesses that I will physically be there managing the day to day. So what I do, like, I look for people who are good enough for what I want. I give them the idea and the vision I want for those businesses, and I move to other things as long as they're making money and I'm getting paid. So in 2014, I noticed that Bella Niger, which was the biggest fashion site at that point in time, wanted to compete with Linda Ikeji in terms of gossip. So I saw an opening and I launched Star Vite. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm an Igbo man. I always, I only think in that way, you know. So I launched Star Vite and I made sure that we got the best deal. So we got partnership with Lagos Fashion and Design Week. We got partnership with every single person who wanted a niche market. Like your fashion is a niche market. So like it's not, it's like, so you can, you could charge a lot of money for a small crowd that people really need to talk to. And I did that in 2014. Then, then, um, then it was going like, well, then you know how you keep doing this thing, you just realize that some of your businesses are a lot of based on the website. 
And at that time, people started paying me to wear their clothes because it felt like at that time, the influencing marketing, the influencing marketing sort of started, right? So people thought, oh, who is the man that is out there that people can pay to wear clothes and they can sell off and all the rest of that? So people started paying me money. So I started charging 50K for one outfit. Then from 50K, I went to 100,000. From 100,000, I went to 150,000 to wear an outfit. But at some point, I just thought, like, if I could make this outfit myself, then... I might as well get all. <laughs> I might as well get all these monies, you know. So, um, in 2016, I launched a, a fashion line called Tries by Nobs. Now, as an evil man, right? I I knew, and I still know that I was making money from the internet, but I also don't want to push my fashion line to overshadow every single thing. And let me explain to you how it works, right? In Nigeria, people know you for one thing people do want to know you for one thing so i didn't want people to know me as a designer or as a clothes maker i want to be able to get all these monies and maybe when i'm in my 50s i can say you know what i make clothes now i don't really i no longer influence marketing and every single thing but what i have also been able to do is like for tries by noobs we have clients that pay good money for designs that are bespoke and it's not necessarily advertised on the internet so we my clients are people who can afford captain our so our starting price is from 48,000. So look at people who can afford Kaftan from that range upwards, and those are the people that I sell to. But I have also been able to build a personal brand for myself. So let me give you an example. So if a client, if, let's say if this is a company and they're doing this event, so I go to them and I say, for me to speak, this is how much I charge. But you have to also take an ad on 360snobs.com and start by T. So I've been able to create three different businesses that's online, that have an online presence, and I make money from those three ones. So every single one of them have a red card. So, and because of my personality, mine seems to be the biggest. Let me give an example. So right now, if you want to post this event on Starvity, we charge 52,500. If you want to post it on 360.com, we charge 52,500. If you want to post it on Nubuli West page, you charge 500,000. And by the grace of God, we are getting business. So that's about me, in a nutshell. Now, you know, I saw on the leaflet that you can be a brand. It's easy, but it's also difficult. It's easy in the sense that you, you need to be intentional for what you want to build. You need to be intentional on how to go about it. And you have to be consistent and know what you're doing for yourself. I see a lot of young people out there who do things for what I call vibe. Vibe is like, you know, when they're doing something at the go hotel, even when you're not invited, you just want to post and use the hash hashtag just so you can feel cool. I, I don't come from that background. My background is like everything, almost everything has to be paid for. And, you know, so I try to build brand for myself. I try to like, you know, if I come here and I wear a green socks, even if you don't remember anything, you remember my green socks. So I try to tell a stories that make you feel like, you know, if you look at me, I'm not the tallest man in the room but when i enter a room i will not leave without leaving an impact in that room and that's exactly how it has to do with building brand building businesses and sometimes you want a business to outlive you you need to think about it from a business point of view i tell people i have never posted one article in my life i have written but i've not posted but i have people who are capable of doing these things and i tell them the directions that we need to go you have to build businesses that will outlive you. You have to build businesses that follow the trend, but not all businesses. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. Is if you want it, if a lot of Nigerians, because Linda Keji bought a house, sorry I'm using her for the second time, but because she bought a house, a lot of people think that the gossip blogging is where to go to. But not forgetting that you can do blogging that has to do with the church. You can do blogging that has to do with cooking. You can do blogging that has to do with baby, taking care of a baby. You can do blogging that has to do with so many other things that people have ignored just because they want to be able to, they want to make money in one year. And the Nigerian public are always eager to move to the next hot person. So it's always a problem. So you can have one rush, one good year, and you keep trying to have another good year. You keep trying to push and push and push, and it never happens to you. So you pray, you stay consistent, you also have to be intentional. I keep saying you have to be intentional. You have to say to yourself, this is where that you need to be. If you make clothes that you come to church, come to church on time, then sit at the back. If the offering table is in front, take a long row from the back 
drop your offering and go back. By the time you go back, somebody will say, I like what he's wearing. But you, you need to use yourself to sell what it is that you do. You know, I, I have the conversation, I tell young people, there's a whole lot of way to make money. On my way here, somebody said, oh, I want to open a clothing business. I want to have a sit down to talk to you. I said, it's 250K. He said, can we meet on Thursday? I said, fine. But the thing is, like, I can command such an amount of money right now because I have put in the work. But you have to be able to put in the work to say this is where you're going. But you have to also make sure you're bringing value to the table. Do you understand? If somebody said to you, can you influence something? Can you sell these glasses if I give it to you? You need to be sure that the people, when they see you wear the glasses, they would want to wear that. Like they just said, like, you know, we have conversations where he speaks evil to me. How, like, you know, I took it, the first time we even spoke with each other was I took a picture in front of my door. And he saw my flowers. And he was like, I could come to your house and help you plant the flowers. And I gave him the house address. So, you know, we started a conversation and became friends. When he told me about this, I said, don't speak too much. Put me on the desk thing. I will be here. This afternoon when I called him and I say, uh, like, oh, I'm in traffic. I've been here for an hour, 40 minutes. I was going to take a bike. He was like, don't try it. So when I got to take a bike, I didn't tell him. I just got on the bike. <laughs> and I started coming because I need to be here today. But the thing is, people tell you different things. Um, maybe my Igbo background is what pushes me to do things. You need to be intentional to make money. And I give people, a lot, I tell you, young people, I, I'm sorry I'm making, I'm emphasizing the money, but we live in a country that is difficult. We live in an economy that everything has to be paid for in full. If you want to buy a house, you have to pay full cash. If you want to buy a car, you have to pay full cash. If you want to buy diesel for your generator, you have to pay full cash. And with all due respect to the mothers and the women, no woman will love you when the house is hot. She can pretend, but she won't put her head on your chest because both of you are sweating. So you like, you know, so I, I, I come from, <laughs> you know, I, I, come, I, I come from, I come, yeah, I come from that background that like, you know, the evil man, I used to, you know, when I tell people like, people come to my house, I'm not saying everybody has to practice, but like people come to my house to say, ah, uh, how far? Tell she has everything. I said, I don't know how much the payment. I don't know how much my wife collects for salary. She works with Friesland Wamco. I don't know how much she's paid. So I try to work hard so I don't tell her to meet me halfway in anything. She does what she wants to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I come from that background when the man provides for the for the family, and I, I, don't, I don't mean that I provide so that I can say I'm the man of the house. I also have equal responsibility and she will share it there with my wife but i wouldn't want my family to suffer so when i see young people you know getting carried away whether it's music whether it's fashion whether it's like you know i'm this is the church so i have to preach the things that i say and how and how i say in a couple of days on the internet a lot of young women say that we cannot condemn transactional sex so meaning that women can put a price on their body and we shouldn't have anything to say about it. I mean, it's 2019, so a lot of things are changing. I mean, we have to support whether you like it or not. But the thing is, you need to think for yourself who you want to be. You need to think for yourself what it is that you're selling. You need to think for yourself what it is that you want to put forward. You need to think for yourself how do you want people to see you when they see you. You need to sell your story. And like I say, if nobody listens. Be truthful to yourself at least. And I, I tell people every day, you don't have to like me, but you have to respect my job. You have to make sure that if anybody gives you a work to do, if they just says to me, you have to be here, I have to be here. You may, you may say, I don't like Noble. He's not my friend. He's not my guy. But it's okay. But I, do, I want my job. I want people to not give me a job because they don't like me, not because my work is not good enough. So you have to always think from that angle. And anything that you want to do, most of us who stay in Lagos, you guys don't even know what you have. You don't know. Lagos, the population that is a problem is also a gift in disguise. You need to decide. Like, you know, you need to, if you need to make weave, find your market, be the best weave we got in Shango today or Agile anywhere. Don't try to drag the market. Make sure that you're winning whatever it is that you're selling. Do you, do you, do you understand? Decide what you want to do. People will never stop wearing Ankara. And it's not too expensive to start. So, you know, I, I might come here and give you a long business plan and the rest of them. But the thing is that sometimes you don't have to start with the business plan. But you have to be intentional. Every single business that I own, I first register them as a business. Because I intend to collect big checks. So if you need to do a, check, a business, a job for him, he's not going to pay you a Chidema, uh, uh, Oloma, 
this thing he does not he's not going to check, send the check he will want to send it to a company so you need to always think from the back to see this company i'm starting today is going to grow to be big but you have to approach it as a business like he mentioned register your businesses learn about the taxes lagos state nigeria is broke we don't have money so the taxation is the only way government is going to make money don't let them shut down your business because you do not want to do and it's also have what they call tax exemption at least the first three years or five years for some businesses find out what applies to your business do you understand and if you have an idea that is good enough in lagos and you have people outside of lagos go there and sell your ideas everything does not have to be in lagos and most of the times, the things that are in Lagos are being done by everybody. Look for opportunity in Nebado, in uh, Jebode. It might not be the big money, but you need to find what, like, you know, people, people are making money. Open a barbering site. Like, there's a lot of ideas about people because people want to be on the internet and they want to make their way with everybody on the internet. Like, I can give you a small story of myself. So, excuse me. Most, when a lot of people were doing this whole thing of internet, I wrote a concept called the 1000 Smile. So the 1,000 smile to me is an idea, like if I smile at you, you will smile back at me, right? And I went to companies because I needed companies to sponsor it. So I went to Huawei, they did the first year. And I, I thought about a brand that talks about smile and happiness, and I went to Mortena, and I've signed a five-year deal with Mortena. So every year, by the grace of God, even if I don't do anything, that money comes to me. That money comes to me. So I make sure that I give them the work that they, they paid for, but I also get the opportunity to travel around Nigeria, covering and capturing smiles. So I go to different places, I eat their food, I capture smile, I project the smile, I meet people, I help people. Like, you know, I go to communities, in my, I, I went to Calabar, and it was a fishing community, and I found out that some fishermen who didn't have nets, but they're older now, they, so they can't provide for their family. So I bought nets for them, so they could actually fish and provide. So you like, I try to impact the society in little ways. I met someone in Aquaibum who has lost his wife, and lost his older brother, but the older brother was in the morgue, and he didn't have money to do. So I put his account number on my profile on internet, and people sent money to him. So we can be the change that we want in the society. <laughs> Thank you. And, and you can do that also being you and making money for yourself. You know, I keep saying money, and I, you know, I know why I said this. Like, I've, I've seen most of this ones that are on this they can tell you it's not easy do you understand like it's not easy everybody will claim it's easy or anything you know i used to my, my family everybody knows the account the atm card I, I put it on the table so that they can say they want to buy dispenser water or anything like but you have to work hard you have to work hard you cannot bless somebody tweeted yesterday to say oh some parents one, like, I don't understand this life again. One parent is punishing the couple financially because they asked them to do something, they didn't do it. Oh, they are, I'm like, what happened to the couple's money? I don't know, but like, I grew up in, in, in a family where you have to work hard for yourself. My parents attended my wedding. They didn't pay for anything at my wedding. So, but I see a lot of young men who just, I'm not saying like, it's, if your culture permits it, I mean, that's fine. But if you really want to make your parents feel proud, then you need to work hard for it. Have the wedding that you can afford. And let the wife know that this is where you can afford and where you cannot afford. And it, you'll be happier. Be open about your finances. Listen, this is not a marriage counseling class, but I'm just trying to put every single thing that I feel like, you know, in, in whatever it is that you're doing, you have to do. First thing I say for you, building your brand, be intentional, know that this is what you want to do, go about doing what you want to do, keep, keep pushing yourself. There's a lot of money, don't charge how much I charge, but work on your brand. The Instagram has made it easier for a lot of people to have ways to sell who they are, and it's free. I don't know the time I talked about it, but thank you. So if you have questions, like here. Thank you very much, Nobu. Thank you, thank you, Ibokun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not how they say it. Ibokun. Ibokun. Ibokun zonu. Yes. Afambu obuefi Nobu Igwe. I'm a titled man, so you have to. <laughs> thank you very much. Please let's do it once again for Obuefi Nobu. For those who don't know, Obuefi is a title. It's what it means is um. If I speak in it. The killer of cows. So let's ask him. If you like Ibul, 
How many cows has he killed? Um, a lot of my friends call me Owe Finu Kefi. Do you know what that means? Mm -hmm. It means a person that kills cow in the scarcity of cows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nobu. Please, let's get our questions ready for Nobu. Do we have a question for him? Please. Uh, we'll need to split this. Come on, let's we'll share this. One. Good afternoon, Mr. Noble. Hi. I've been following you for a very long time because I'm into fashion. Um, initially, when I started following you, I felt like your fashion statements were a bit toned down. Now, I follow the likes of the Tiana, Tubo, CEO Lumini. I felt like their style was just out there, like sellable. You really don't need to look at Tiana's style like twice before you say, oh, wow, this is a pretty dress. But for your statement, it was very toned down because initially I felt it was a bit funny. Now, sometimes you can go out wearing your Ishiago, your wrapper, and then you wear his socks. And I'm like, what's, what's he doing? And I flip through, and I'm like, this is not making sense, and I'm rolling through. But over time, I had to go back to your page again because I noticed that you post a dress like you styled um ebuka yesterday i saw the agbada it was on point Thank but you. even before that there was a time you styled Anto big brother africa last year i saw the dress you made very toned down but the internet was on fire that particular day that drew my attention back to your page and i went back flipped through down saw your old page my question today first of all i want to appreciate your work and I, you. you're doing a good job but i want to um find out how you remain there even with that style now your style is not the everyday style you can just put on a dress and mr noble just puts flip through a color on top of the dress and it turns something else so i want to know how you do all of that and still remain there even with the likes of these other fashion designers that i'm following thank you <clears throat> so thank you uh, thank you so much so i, I want to you know i i used to brag and tell people that it, it was not that you didn't understand the fashion it was just like i i i was in the future in the past no and, and it's the truth no <laughs> no no is it true it, because because I was, doing, I was doing my interpretation of what fashion should be. But because a lot of people didn't sort of put it in work at that point in time until a lot of people were able to take fashion risk now. So going back, they realized, oh, he's been doing this for a long time ago. And the thing is because I, I just felt that there are no rules to everything. If you want to break, if you want to live outside of the rules, then you'll be able to make things happen for you. And that's what I mean about being intentional, being consistent. So back in the day, if you wear different colors, they call it uh, color riot. Then a couple of years later, it became color blocking. Do you, do you understand? And so back in the day, you can't wear a play tie and like, you know, a checkered suit or anything. But now everything goes. So, and you know, I used to tell people like, it's not bragging if it's true. Because I have decided to know that fashion would be what fashion would be. And the only way you can remain at the top or at the level with every single person is by being consistent. So if they say, oh, baggy pants are in, then somebody goes to your Instagram page and go about four years ago and realize that you used to wear baggy pants when they were in. And you've always had that. So you need to say to yourself, how can my fashion be timeless? And you just realize that your fashion does not have to follow trend. Your fashion has to be personal. Your fashion has to tell the story and it be interpreted in the way that you want it interpreted, right? And it's, you know, now I have got a child. So there are a couple of things I would love to wear, but I also have to think about, like, you know, oh, he's a married man, so they expect, but my wife's also give me, a, like, when I wear, I have shorts that I stop here that I wear. So when I wear, my wife doesn't like the pictures. When I send it to her to say, oh, babe, I want to pay this in mini shorts, she'll be like, she'll be like, She'll like, I have nothing to say. She will not leave any comments. She will not like the pictures. She won't do anything. But I, sometimes I post those pictures to show the people who want to wear shorts that I know how to wear the shorts as well. Because the thing that happens is if you do not know what time it is, the brands in Nigeria may never talk to you. 
they they follow trend they follow the numbers so for some of us who are not big on numbers in terms of it has to be you have to be on your impact you have to be able to wear one outfit and let it be the conversation they're having the office meetings on monday do you understand that is where i come from i i ask people that do fashion like she does fashion to do do things that regular people understand but find people who are willing to take risk anto is willing to take risk with tibuka you have to like push a little bit but the thing is you you for me i like colors but colors are not pulled off by body size it's confidence yeah so you, you have to find people who are who can put their head up and wear anything and they will sell it so if you're doing fashion and like you know i don't do all those like you know when you don't have you don't have to show your body or any of those i'm not saying people that show body has anything or whatever but your fashion have to be timeless every single have to, every single thing you didn't have to be you and people should be able to say ah i didn't think i could wear green socks but we've seen it on nobu i know i can pull it off and when you wear it don't be trying to hide it or any of those things you have to like wear it with pride and let people know that this is what you're doing do you understand and it will catch on and they will respect you people say oh don't wear less of shoe with a brother if you wear a less of shoe with a brother let the trousers about that trousers stop somewhere here so people can see your shoes it's the truth a couple of years back we when we stopped wearing socks for for a uh, suit people used to think it was out of the way but right now everybody wear shoes without socks and it's in do you understand so if you continue to push one day they will look back and they'll respect you but you have to continue pushing and we can only, I can give you my number, we can only talk afterwards, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Nobu? Any questions? Another question again, please. Okay. Um, the last time I checked, you have 200, you have about 200 and something thousand followers on Instagram. Yeah. Um, about 210 or 212? 212. 212. 212. Yeah, going by 13 by tomorrow. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> okay. And, Don't pay um, attention to me. Most times when you post um, pictures on your page, yeah. you, the presence there are not that much. Like, the way, when I see your style on Bella Ninja yeah. or on other blogs, yeah. I see like over 1,000 or more comments yeah. for your style. Yes. So, and from what you've said today is almost like the big brands put you which is fine yeah. so I, I want to know if the big brands come from your page like the presence you get from your page or other bigger pages or bloggers that post your work when they start when they go out there and then the, that's one question then the second question is um, over time I was a bit laid back with styling um, I wanted to I told myself this year that I wanted to style a celebrity. That was my major focus for this year. But I know all that it entails. Even when you style a celebrity, for a celebrity to post your work on their page, they are charging you like 500K. And that was just too much for me. So what I did was I had to pass through one or two people that knew one or two other people. And I was able to style Nina this, um, this year. Yeah. Yeah, but even styling her, I had, I styled her and she wore the outfit and when I had the conversation with her, she promised me that she was going to post the work on her page so that it could be there that last morning styled yeah. her. But after that, she didn't post the work on her page and I had it posted on my page. I wished she liked it or commented. She did not. But I understand the whole politics and the whole stuff in it. I know that. It was going to, I had to put in some finance for her to like, for her to share on her page, which is fine. For small designers or young designers that are coming up like me, what's your advice to break even when it comes to that? Because I know that getting presence on your page, you need to get those celebrities right on there. Thank you. Okay, um, so to answer your first question, a lot of young people, a lot of young designers, a lot of people focus so much on the internet. And so the internet tells the story, right? So on my page on Instagram, I have, if I go to my insight to check, I have about, I have about 
um, 58 percent men and 42 percent women following me do you understand so I have a lot I have a lot more men following me than women so men are not likely going to click likes on your pictures men will save your style men will look at your page and men will keep going forward right now but if a woman posts that picture men will like the picture women don't care they will like the picture so the in the terms of numbers the woman that have my same number will always have a higher engagement on their page more than mine now but the thing is my strength it's in being conversations that are taken outside of the internet does it make sense to you so my dressing is a dressing that people will not copy wear to their offices have conversations during meetings and whatnot so that way I try to create styles that are different right so you can see my phone right so it's if normally you'll be like oh it's the iPhone 11 Pro and the case would have been normal but I have to get an artist to do something on my own case that is different so if everybody puts the phone on their table I want my own phone to stand out and I have to think of ways to make my phone stand out the same applies to design so I am not interested in the number or if I'm interested in numbers I know what to do you know if I post pictures of myself and my wife and my kid people always like it but I'll be cheating and it won't give me the opportunity to know what people like if I post a picture of me in Abada every day this week I will get a higher number if I write stories of love on my page I will get a higher number but I wouldn't be true to myself I want people to see me for who I am so I'm not doing it for the gallery I'm doing it because I'm, I'm sharing my style with you. So whether you like it or you don't like it, my happiness comes from the fact that I've, I've shared what I wore today with you. Now, coming on, on, on styling people and every single thing, it, there's no one way that it works. But you have to find a way that works for you. Right. I am not one of the people who rush to style famous people because I want famous people to pay for my designs. So I don't sort of approach them first. I do designs that when they see, they would come to me. But it's also good for you to have these conversations before. If you make it the person look like that, you need a huge favor. They might always drag the favor. So, but I also think you need to decide what your market is and find out somebody who is also free to do those things for you. So if you feel that Nina is too whatever, we can go for the Yoruba addresses. Yoruba addresses have a lot of numbers. That's the truth. They have a lot of numbers. And most of their followers are so maybe the people who are also going to be eager to wear something. So instead of finding somebody who will be uptight with your design, find someone who will, feel, will be glad to work with you in, in partnership. And that's exactly what I do. So, you know, I look for people like when Big Brother ends, I look for the person who I think is stylish, but people didn't appreciate. And I'll take them and I'll style them. So if I style the people, oh my God, I didn't expect this person to be this way. I am getting the work that I want to get. So I don't go to the people who I think will feel they are, they are big already. I change people's look. So if you can change someone's look, trust me, people will come to you. And you have to think about whose look can I change. And like, you know, for this year, I picked Kathy to style. I'll pick Fraud to style. And even though I know people like Mike and EK will be the easier sales in fashion, I wouldn't go to them. I'll go to the people who I can impact in such a way that they'll feel like I'm doing something that's different. Yeah, that's what you have to also do. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much again, Nobu. Any other questions for Nobu? No, but let me ask a question. How yes, do you handle them criticisms? Because a lot of times people do come up with ideas, okay? But then what we first think about is how will it be received by the others? And the one we think will get more sticks than praises. What we simply do is actually kill that's those same ideas we brought up. How do you handle this? So I, I, used, I, I used to tell people that something that I do is a game that you can also play. When I go for meetings and networking meetings and whatnot, I look for decision makers. Let me explain to you, right? So you know every company or every brand they are trying to speak to, they already have a budget or they don't have a budget. 
So I try to find, I used to do different things. I find from the back. If I come to him to say, if he's managing, let's say, iPad, and I come to him on casually, and I'll be like, what is iPad looking into in the year 2019? He could be like, automobile, uh, fashion, music. And I'll be like, so if I have a, a proposal on music, would you like to look at it? He'd be like, sure. I'd be like, I would like for you to tell me if it's going to fly or not, so I don't keep disturbing with phone calls or emails or anything. So I do the proposal, and I send him a non-disclosure as well to say this, this proposal is between you and I. If you're not going to do it, just send it back to me, and let's end the conversation, right? And I send it to him. But the thing is, if you don't push your ideas, and you let your ideas die, you, won't live, you may live to regret it. So every single time I have an idea about things that I think that will work, I put them in writing and I send it to the people who I think would want to engage in such an activity. So you have to think about, so for instance, the, tele, the telcos, what are they looking for? The telecommunication will always look for people in the university. Some of these people here, most of these people here, everybody on this, on this table, they know the network that they want to use. There's no dial star, five, five, whatever, whatever, that will convince them to change a line. They already know what they want. There's no amount of double data that will convince them to change a line. Do you understand? So these are not the people they are talking to. They're talking to people who are younger. And that's one of the things that GTB did at the time they, be, they began. They knew that if they, got, if they got people who are younger, that someday they will grow to become managers and decision makers in the different industries. So if you have a, an idea, think about who your idea applies to and the company or brand that would likely need people in that age bracket. Everything is about idea and how is workability. So for the banks, they want an idea that will make people open an account. Do you understand? So if you can convince them that in this event, 50,000 people open an account, I can tell you free of charge, they will support such an idea. So you have to think about the end result before you pull up an idea. You have to think about if your idea has been done before, are you modifying it to, keep, to come up with a result? Do you, do you get? And also, for as much as possible, try to get yourself into a meeting with someone who will have time to listen to your explanation of your idea. But I also think it's easy. And sometimes do... So now there's a lot of things that have gone audiovisual. Like people like to see what they're doing. So shoot a pilot of your idea. So you have a TV show you want to do, get a camera, get somebody, let them shoot something. So you have something to present so they can see clearly that you're not speaking English, right? That, that's, that's another thing you, you can do. So make sure the ideas are something that you can feel... And you also have to, you have, to have like in a CV of the ideas that you've put together, the ideas that have worked, the ones that haven't worked, but you need to continue to sell yourself, keep selling yourself. That's what I would say. Thank you. Um,